Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey, if anybody is joining me for the first time here, thank you so much. My slogan is Believable Brown Beauty, that doesn't mean you have to be brown to stay and participate, it's just an explanation of the makeup that I do on this channel. Also I like to use makeup in slightly unconventional ways sometimes, so if that sounds like something you'd like, please keep watching. So, today's video is take two. I am so annoyed, but my battery had died in my mic and I had recorded this video two days ago and then went to edit it yesterday and there was no audio. And some people suggested like doing voiceovers and stuff, but that's just not my style. And I think when you know you're doing a voiceover makeup tutorial, you do it in a completely different way. I think it would be quite jarring to see my mouth moving loads and then the words that I'm saying not matching up with the movement. So, I'm shooting again. Right, but today I've decided not to do the same makeup that I did in that video because it would just feel weird trying to recreate it. I might do it again in the future, but today I've decided to do um, a requested look that people have asked for, which is a simple like daytime smoky eye. Also, I'm just gonna speak louder and put a disclaimer on because um, there is somebody in the house opposite the road having um, work done. It is like 30 odd degrees in London. We do not have air conditioning, it is hot. And so I've got the windows open so I don't suffocate under my lights as well. So um, please excuse the noise on this video. I wish they would stop, but they won't. Oh, they did then. But anyway, let's just get into the makeup. So, yeah. First of all, I'm using my Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer. I was gonna say Fluid Sheer Foundation, but it's not. It's just called Fluid Sheer. And I'm using this as um, an underpaint highlight. I'm just naturally adding some glow to the face. Then I'm taking my 24 hour brow setter brow gel from Benefit, which is like currently my favourite brow gel. Just brushing out Struggleina first and foremost. And then the good brow. In the moment. So my foundation, I'm using the Power Power Play? Yeah, Power Play from Cover Effects Foundation. And the colour I'm using at the moment is G110, which is darker than my usual colour because I'm so much darker from being on holiday and the fact that it's still really sunny in London has just meant that I'm, I'm going to keep my colour for long. Oh, it's that intruder there. I'm going to keep my colour for long. I, I generally keep my tan for a long time. It makes me think that if I lived in a warm country would my skin just look like this all the time? That might be incentive to leave. The concealer, I'm still using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in my mind. Even though I'm darker than usual, I wore sunglasses the whole time that I was on holiday and I've been wearing sunglasses, the same sunglasses in London, so I haven't got any darker really here. So I'm just going to concentrate it on the dip that I have and carry it up into this little crevice here and blend that to the way. I like to put it on with that, um, what's this called, Expert Concealer? Yeah, Expert Concealer and then just blend out the edges with the Expert Face Brush. I'm actually going to use my concealer as my um, eyeshadow base today. And like before this was a thing, like before people started to cut creases and stuff, I've always used concealer as a base on myself especially. I think sometimes when I'm working on clients, they feel more comfortable knowing that I've used a product that is specifically designed to keep their shadow on longer. But I always found using a tiny bit of concealer like this was enough, so that's what I'm gonna to do today. That's a really nice color. I would actually just rock that on its own. Put a bit of um, translucent powder over it, done. But that's not what we're doing today. Right, I'm taking my um, cold pencil from MAC and the color Squid. And this is what I'm going to use to create the smokiness. So I'm just drawing this over. I'm taking a 231 crease brush from Zoeva and I'm just going to blur out that top line. And I like quite a feline pull on the eye, so that's what I'm doing there. And do the same on the other eye. Also, that in itself could be a look. I could definitely wear this on its own. But I'm just going to show you something else. I'm going to go back and just further intensify the lash line because that always gets softened when you blend it out and you do kind of want it to be a bit darker here. 
so you can see I've made it darker with the lash same brush and just blend it a bit softer this time so you don't lose all the depth there that machine sounds like it's actually in my front room it's too hot guys I'm really sorry the audio won't be as good as usual but I'm literally melting not complaining, because I like the sunshine, but it's a bit hot to have the window shut, even if it is to preserve the sound quality. Hopefully you can still hear me. Then I'm taking a blusher. So remember what I said about using makeup in weird places? I'm taking this colour from MAC, and it's called Swiss Chocolate. Hopefully they haven't discontinued it, because they seem to discontinue everything that I like. But I'm going to take that on the same 231 crease brush from Zoeva, and then, watch, I'm going to the mirror right now, and just pop that over. Well, and I'm taking my powder blush from Beauty Pie in the colour Go Rouge and I'm just going to tap that on the middle of the eye. Then I'm taking Sketch Eyeshadow and I'm just going to enhance the lash line, pop a tiny bit in the corner of the eye as well. So I use the 219 pencil brush from MAC and then I'm going back to the 231 from Zoeva just to create a bit of definition here. Taking my 224, going into the sketch and literally just softly, softly blending that through here. For me, the lash line is way too soft now, so I'm going to go back to the cold pencil. And don't be afraid if this happens to you. It's quite, it's quite common when you do this kind of technique with shadows. So I'm going to take my cold pencil again and go right to the root of the lash. And I'm taking my 219 brush again and just blending the top away. There you can see it's a lot more defined, but still really soft which is basically what you want to go for on a daytime smoky. I find that um, using pencil as a way of creating smoke and definition stops it, from, stops it from looking like it's too much, like too overdone for the day. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of this cold pencil and literally just do the little outer like quarter of my eye. Go back to the same pencil brush and just buff that in. So for mascara, I'm going to do my usual combo, my extended play in Giga Black first and foremost, just to give definition and separation to the lashes. So I use this on my tops and my bottoms, lashes, not my ears. I always feel like when I say bottom, it, it's I'm referring to my actual bum, but I mean <laughs> bottom lashes. And then I'm going over my top lashes with my In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash, which is my favourite mascara, which is why I always use it. I used to just wear it on its own, but then once I tried it over Extended Play, I was just like, oh, this is such a cool combo. It does exactly what I want, volume and fluttery at the same time. Most of the time I find like mascaras either do one or the other, they don't do both. This is such a bad thing. Well, it's a good thing, but because of my mum, I never feel like my makeup's complete if I don't have cold pencil in my waterline. So you could quite happily, quite easily leave that out. But to make this makeup feel like me, I have to put cold pencil in my, in my waterline. So yeah, I'm just going to go in with the black. And for anyone who's watching and thinking, oh, does she need to thread her brows or wax her brows? I actually have left them like this on purpose. I really like this natural, organic shape to the brow at the moment. I used to be like brow police where they, every hair had to be in its exact perfect place. Otherwise I wasn't happy, but 
I don't know, I just feel like this look kind of works for me at the moment, just a little bit softer. I don't know, I just feel like this type of brow is much more approachable than a super sharp, super defined brow where everything is in its perfect place. I don't know if that's just a personal thing to me, but I just feel like when I see women that have got like really beautiful polished makeup and their brows are a little bit softer, I don't know, there's just something about it to me that's a bit more alluring than just like that proper sharpy kind of brow. So yeah, that's the vibe that I've got going on at the moment. Yay! I like this. Okay, so for blush, I'm actually going to use a raw blusher today and not a lipstick. Um, if this is my favourite powder blush from MAC and it's called Fleur Power, this is the one that I wore on my wedding day as well. I just love it. It's just the perfect pink. I always say if I had no other blush in my kit, I would keep this because I've literally used this on really pale skin and deeper tones than myself and it always looks so pretty. So yeah, this would be like, this is my holy grail blush. Until I find a new one, this is it. Then I'm gonna go back to that Swiss chocolate color and kind of use it as a contoury blush, just to reinforce the shape of my cheekbone back here. And you can do that too. You can use a darker, cooler tone blush as a way of like sculpting your face in a much more natural way. Oh, why have I got gold inside my ear? I don't know what the heck that was from, but. Okay, so now moving on to lips. I am using a bit of sweet lip pencil from MAC. And I'm just gonna line my lips. And I'm just going to line my lips. Then I'm taking a lip pencil from Paris Berlin and the color is 202. And just filling in here. I think this combo is a really good one for my skin tone at the moment. I don't know, I think it'll probably still look nice when I go back to my normal skin colour, but I love the ease that it's just literally two pencils in your makeup bag and not much else, so that's cool. We could quite happily leave the makeup here. I mean, I still have to set and everything, but I'm really into gloss at the moment and I also love mixing up textures. So I've got matte eyes and I don't wanna have a matte lip too, so I'm gonna use a tiny bit of gloss. I'm gonna mix my glosses because you know, I'm the queen of mixing. I love to like muddle things up. So I'm using my NYX Butter Gloss in Praline and then I'm gonna use a Bobbi Brown lip gloss as well. And the Bobbi Brown lip gloss is rosy, number 20. Okay, so now that that's all on, I feel like I could do with a tiny bit more blush. So I'm just gonna pump up the cheeks, the apples a little bit more. This lip colour, I love. I've not worn this combination before, first time I've done it today, I really like it. Okay, okay so now I'm gonna set everything. I'm using my matte cover effects powder. Um, the setting powder in deep and I'm using a 133 brush from MAC and just powdering only the middle of my face. Usually I would use my uh, dark mineralized skin finish underneath my eyes but that's going to be too light for me at the moment so I'm just using this. Then I'm taking my Danessa Myricks powder in 05. Is it 05? Yeah they're both called number five <laughs> and I'm just using that to kind of map my forehead and add a little warmth to my skin as well. So guys, there you go, this is the final look for today. This is definitely something that can become your go-to makeup look where you don't really have to think about it and you can kind of do it on autopilot. It's really simple in the brushes that I use and the product and the technique is quite simple and should be quite easy for you to master as well. So I hope that was helpful. I find that if you have almond shaped eyes like mine and you have a lot of space between your lash line and your crease line, Opting for this liner technique is a bit more subtle in terms of doing a daytime smoky eye. I find that even when I use softer colours on myself, if I take the colour all the way up to the crease, it just looks like wool. 
even if the colour's softer, just because there's so much eyelid space, it looks like there's a lot of makeup going on. However, if you have hooded eyes, you can get away with it. So that is an advantage that you have over us. Um, if you don't follow me already, I'll leave my Instagram handle for you here. I do live Get Ready With Me on Sunday mornings at 9.30 GMT on my channel. Not on my channel, on my Instagram. So if you'd like to see how I do makeup in real time and ask some questions and just generally chat and hang out, there's some really lovely people that join me there on Sundays. Feel free to do that. Also, if you have subscribed, please hit the notification bell. Apparently YouTube don't send emails out anymore to let people know when videos go up. You need to hit that bell too. They're asking so much. But, so yeah, that would be really helpful if you would do that. And if you haven't subscribed and you would like to, subscribe and then hit the notification bell. I think that's all I have to say for today. I am off to have a cool shower and take my son out to do something fun for today. Thank you so much for watching and um, don't forget to share and comment and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!